everyone welcome back to the channel today we're down in the office we are working with three different devices today we're going to work with the uv printer we're going to be working with the 3d printers and we're also going to be working with the laser over in the workshop to make some custom light boxes with led lighting and i'm going to show you how i did it using all three so if this is something you're interested in and want to find out more stay tuned i'm going to jump right into it all right, so jumping into SketchUp, I've brought the Star Trek insignia. I found a SVG of the outline and brought that in. I'm going to make a couple of offsets first because we're going to be needing to make some walls and as well as kind of a recessed area for the acrylic. So once I have those set up, I'm going to bring the inside one in up about half of an inch. And then we're going to take the outside one in just another eighth inch higher. We're going to go ahead and make sure that that is the right depth for our acrylic and then i'm going to add a couple of holes one that could be possibly used for hanging the second one is going to be to pass the wires in once we're happy with it i'm going to go ahead and export this as an stl so that we can uh, send it off into a 3d printer we'll drop that stl into the bamboo studio software and uh, just going to go ahead and double check that it looks solid everything is uh, not giving us any errors. Uh, just using PLA, so we're going to go ahead and slice this plate. Uh, we don't get any errors, and it shows that the overall job is going to take about an hour and 15 between the prep and the print. So we'll go ahead and send that off to the printer. So always want to make sure our base layer goes down uh, nice and flat. The bamboo printers do a good job of self-leveling, uh, but I do generally just give it a nice wipe down of alcohol. Uh, checking in on it every so often, just make sure it's still moving along, and once it's all done, we are good to go and we can pop that off the plate. Next thing we need to do is cut out our acrylic. So jumping into light burn, I did export that inner uh, section as an outline. And so we're gonna just go ahead and move this up into the corner. And for the Reno 45, I'm running at about uh, 12 to 14 millimeters a second and 65% uh, max power for this. That should cut it through cleanly in a single pass. So go ahead and drop our acrylic in, make sure that our focus is set right they have this nice plunger focus set tool on there so i do turn the air down a little bit when cutting through the acrylic i find that gives it a smoother edge than running full air uh, the little flashes there kind of showing that it is cutting through those can give you a little bit of problem on acrylic so you may want to uh, elevate this off the honeycomb but uh, this one seemed to cut through nice and cleanly so we go ahead and make sure it popped out cleanly, check the edges for any cracking. Everything's looking nice and smooth. So it's off to the UV printer. So I'm gonna put this on the slide plate as it's bigger than the, the mini plate. And I'm using some blue painter's tape as a mask. Just, we're gonna oversize the image just a bit to get it edge to edge. And I don't want that cured UV ink on the normal bed. And then I kind of do a loop back just to make sure that the acrylic will hold in place. Once we're happy with that positioning, we're gonna jump over into this software. Um, I didn't show setting this up. I used that same outline in Illustrator as a mask to mask off the uh, original movie poster to get this image. Uh, unfortunately, I lost that footage, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm using for the custom graphic and just kind of sizing it and aligning it to the acrylic. I went ahead and used the snapshot feature of the software, which takes a good camera view. And I lowered the opacity just to check that we're uh, getting an alignment just over the edges, getting it centered, but then you do want to remember to bring that opacity back up to 100%, otherwise it's going to come out very dim. So they're doing it right there. Then uh, depending on the direction you're going, we want to do uh, white first, then CMYK, or the inverse if we're going to flip it over and print it on the back side. But you'll see here, it's going to use 0.33 milliliter of ink. It'll send the job off and... Uh, starts printing does the pass and then the uv cure all in one uh doing it left to right and you can see here in the time lapse it just kind of moves along printing off our object all right so this is the second one i did this is where we actually printed on the back side of the acrylic basically the same method but uh didn't need to send you through the whole process again so it's off to the workbench. We've got our second print here. This is the black one. I did go ahead and UV print my logo on the back, just testing out some settings of the printer as well. But uh, I'm using some LED light strips that are meant for the five volt, the USB power. And then I bought some of these dimming USB power switches. They go on and off and they have the two wires that we can solder on there. So we're gonna get set up to uh, cut this out, but we will need to make sure we get the right length first. So I'm just kind of wrapping around the inside, seeing how much we need 
trying to get it tucked into the corners as much as I can. And then you want to find the separation joints. It's right on those uh, where those copper tabs are. There's a line where you can cut that in half and use both sides. So we use a snips to just do that. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure we've got our directions right. There's a plus and minus on there to get your orientation for your wiring right. We're going to tin the solder iron, tin each of the wires, and then we'll just touch down to those copper tabs on each side to uh, get the solder joint going. Once that's in place, we can plug it into our power supply, do a quick test, make sure that it works and the dimming works. Looking good, we can now slide that into the bottom hole and this has like a sticky back on it. So we're going to go ahead and pull part of that back, uh, not the whole thing, just because we want to kind of get that started. So just pull about half of it off there and then we can start feeding the lights in and around this wanting to get that stuck down kind of in the back side and uh, not up to the edge too much. I'm trying to tuck it in as tight as I can to those corners without breaking the uh, LED connections in there. So uh, once we're happy with that, we get it all pressed in place, make sure everything is firmly stuck down. You can go ahead and test the lights one more time, make sure they're still working. We're gonna try the one where we printed on top first. It has a little bit of a thinner white layer, it seems. So I wanna check to see how that looks. So pop it in there and you can see around the edges there. We have, we're seeing the LED rope and I, I don't really like that look. So we're gonna address that a little bit later. Let's test the other one where it's got the color with the white on top of it on the back side of the acrylic. Just kind of temporarily place it in there and check the lighting again. This one's looking a lot better. We're not seeing the LED bars in there. We're just kind of seeing the glow. So that's kind of what I'm going for. We turn them all the way up, you maybe start to see them, but it's still not as defined as the other one. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and start gluing this in. So I'm using some canopy glue. This is something from my RC aviation stuff. Uh, it works. It's a nice flexible glue that dries clear, just takes a little bit of time, and it's good for gluing plastic to plastic. So that's why I'm using that. And then uh, just got to press that in. It is a pretty snug fit. I didn't really just curve for any variants. So uh, once we worked it in, just checking for any over uh, any squeeze out. Um, it's looking good. We'll set that to the side. And for the other one, I'm going to go ahead and try cutting a paper diffuser. It's just typical copier paper. I'm running this at about 200 millimeters a minute and probably about 25% power. Cuts through paper very easily. And now we have a diffuser and I'm just going to go ahead and use that same glue. Just go around the edges and uh, we're going to glue this to the back of that acrylic. Just want to make sure it's nice and snug. It's nice and flat. That will dry in there. Testing our wires again, adding a little more glue to this one and then pressing it in place as well. All right, and here we have a couple different copies of this custom backlit LED light box. Now the camera's not going to show it very well, but we do have some nice photorealistic rep reproduction of the movie poster on here. We're able to 3D print it in the kind of Star Trek insignia. The only thing that I wish I would have maybe taken a little more care on is where I had to loop the lights down here. It does kind of shade out this other little kind of section of the, the uh, insignia here. So maybe uh, breaking that up and uh, adding another wire joint there to get those deeper would help. But all in all, I did like this one a little bit better that has the kind of the image reverse. So the colors are printed first on the back side of the acrylic and then the white uh, covering on there just seemed to be a little bit thicker, made for a better diffuser and we didn't have to add that paper. But even adding the paper onto this one, it kind of got rid of that LED rope look on the inside and it's working pretty well, just an extra step. So the other part with this one is that the acrylic with it being painted on the inside, the print is gonna be a little more protected. Not that these should see a lot of wear, but it is just something to consider. So uh, all in all, very happy with all the machines that worked with this. So the Reno Pro cutting out the acrylic is great for that. If you are, are looking for a benchtop CO2 laser and need something for acrylic, this cuts that very well, especially this clear. The Bamboo Labs 3D printers, if you are just a 
a beginner to 3D printing, you want something very easy that's going to just work out of the box, uh, they are some great printers as well. And the Eufy E1 UV printer, this is just finishing up their Kickstarter, so uh, it's going to be a little bit yet before it's available retail. Uh, so if you miss the Kickstarter and are interested in this, stay tuned. We'll have more videos on it. There are other videos out there for you to watch, and this will be retail available fairly soon as well. And number of cool things like this that you can do with that. So if you are interested in any of these machines, want to learn out more, I will have links down below where you can find out more about each of them. Some of them will be affiliate links that do go to help support this channel. Always appreciate you using them, but no pressure. Just happy to share some ideas, inspire you, give you some better ideas of what these things can do. If you do have any questions or comments about this project or any of the machines, go ahead, leave those down below. And uh, otherwise, feel free just to leave any comment about this. That does help out the algorithm. I do like the interaction with people uh, as well. And so uh, if you can, uh, hit me up down below, leave something. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I do a number of project videos like this around lots of sorts of maker type things with 3D printers, uh, this the UV printer, lots with laser cutters and engravers as well. So uh, I hope you uh, maybe enjoyed this content, want to see more, uh, and I uh, hope to see you in a future video. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap this up here. I hope you learned something or were inspired. And if nothing else, I hope I'm helping you to be encouraged to get out into your workshop and make something yourself.